Let's start this video with a review of a concept from oh, two videos ago. Particles that are stuck in mucus in your airways are moved out of the bronchioles, the bronchi, and the trachea to the blank by what? All right. So let's start with how are particles that are stuck in mucus, how are they being moved? Are they being moved by peristaltic contractions? No, peristaltic contractions, that's the contraction of smooth muscle. That's the way uh, stuff gets moved through your uh, digestive tract, okay? So it is by the movement of cilia. Great, great, okay. So we know it's gonna be one of these three. So it gets, they get moved by cilia up out of the trachea and where do they go? Do they go to the alveoli? No, that would be moving it farther down. No, we don't want that. Do they get moved up to the nasal cavity or to the pharynx? Those are our two options that we've narrowed it down to. Well, I told you that the next time you swallow, you send all that stuff down to the stomach and swallowing uh, uses the pharynx. So the correct answer is the pharynx. Okay, number four. All right, so we're back to talking about alveolar gas exchange. And as we're talking about alveolar gas exchange, I was emphasizing to you that the structure of an alveolus is made out of simple squamous epithelium. And the reason that it's that's a good idea is that simple squamous epithelium allows for diffusion. Keeping this um, area very, very thin so that there's just the tiniest distance between the air here and the blood going by, that is required if um, your blood is going to be able to fill up with oxygen as it travels through an alveolar capillary bed. Alveolar capillary bed. Every one of our alveoli has got its own set of capillaries. So blood is going to be coming in like this. Remember the blood that comes in from the pulmonary arteries is blue, it's low in oxygen and high in CO2. Yeah, it's low in oxygen. That's why we're sending it to the lungs to go pick up oxygen. It's high in CO2. CO2 is the trash. We're sending blood that's low in oxygen, high in CO2 to the alveolus so that it can throw away the trash, the CO2, and fill up with oxygen. So as the blood travels across the capillaries of the alveolus, it is going to throw away the trash, the CO2, pick up oxygen. And so as it leaves the capillary bed, it is going to be in a pulmonary venule and pul pulmonary vein, um, and it's going to be red and it's going to head back to the heart so that the heart can send it out through the aorta to distribute all of this lovely oxygen, right? So ca pulmonary capillary bed, while we're here, I want you to think of well, one interesting concept that's important. The blood is, I, I encourage you to think of it like trucks that are gonna be filled up at the warehouse. Here's how it's not like that, right? Uh, a truck could go in here and just park itself until it gets filled. That's not the way blood travels though. The blood is just traveling through the capillary bed. And actually, any individual red blood cell is going to spend, on average, about three quarters of a second on its way through the capillary bed. That's it. Every red blood cell gets given, while you're at rest, about three quarters of a second to fill up and drop all of its CO2 off and then head back to the body. If there's a red blood cell that goes through here and it has not completely filled up with oxygen, too damn bad. It is just not going to be able to fill up with oxygen. This is the amount of time that any red blood cell has in order to fill itself up with oxygen. And that is why we need this membrane to be very, very thin. If this membrane, the mem this membrane, the word membrane in the context of alveolar gas exchange is not exactly talking about a structure like the pleura. The pleura is a membrane, you can point to it. I can show it to you on a diagram. What we're talking about right now is the respiratory membrane. And the respiratory membrane is almost a concept. The respiratory membrane is the distance between a molecule of oxygen that you just inhaled and is now in an alveolus, the distance between that molecule of oxygen and a red blood cell going by. That's the respiratory membrane. When your lungs are healthy, it's tremendously thin. It's one healthy 
<clears throat> simple squamous epithelial cell, a very thin layer of water, um, another simple squamous epithelial cell, a little bit of basement membrane in between, tremendously thin. But when you get a pneumonia, that respiratory membrane gets thickened, and that is what causes the kind of troubles that we see when people have pneumonias, <clears throat> particularly now during this COVID-19 pandemic. So the factors that affect gas exchange. <clears throat> One of the things we're going to be talking about is membrane thickness, okay? The thickness of the respiratory membrane. So up here at the top, we've got a normal or a healthy lung. And so white is going to be uh, the air that you just inhaled. And to the center of that red line, that's going to be the thickness of the respiratory membrane. Now let's go down here to a pneumonia. White is going to be the air you just inhaled, and we need now to go to the center of this pink area. Well, that is a lot farther. That is much, much farther. So it is going to take a lot longer for oxygen to be able to diffuse from the air you just inhaled to the red blood cell going by, right? We're gonna come back to that concept uh, for a few slides. Before I do, let's also talk about another factor that affects gas exchange, and that is the membrane surface area. Uh, remember, we're thinking about the lungs as kind of like being uh, the, um, the warehouse that's got all the oxygen for loading up the trucks. Every individual alveolar capillary bed is like a set of loading bays in that um, large, uh, warehouse. Your lungs are the warehouse. If you have got a health problem called emphysema uh, because of cigarette smoking or some other problems, your warehouse is just as big. Your warehouse holds just as much oxygen as it did before. But now your warehouse has many fewer loading docks. So if you've got just as much oxygen, you need to move just as much product as you did before. But now instead of having a thousand loading docks, you only have a hundred. Well, you can't load up as many trucks per hour as you did before. When people have got emphysema, their alveoli have been destroyed. And so there are fewer alveoli, fewer alveolar capillary beds. Fewer alveolar capillary beds means there are fewer places for the body to send the red blood cells to fiddle up with oxygen. And that will also decrease the amount of oxygen and CO2 that can be exchanged per minute in that person's lungs. So two main things. Uh, one thing is a thickening of the respiratory membrane as happens in pneumonia. And that you've got the same number of loading docks, but everyone there is working super, super slowly so the trucks can't get loaded up quickly enough. And in emphysema, you don't have enough loading docks. So even though everyone's working very quickly, you simply cannot um, load as many trucks per hour, All right? Oh, and don't forget the concept of ventilation perfusion coupling. We're here now in the lungs, right? And in ventilation perfusion coupling, we learned that from the cardiovascular system. The parts of your lung that look like this, those parts of your lungs, okay, let me back up a little bit. When a patient has pneumonia, there will be some areas of their lungs that still look like this, even though some parts of their lungs look like that, right? If you've got a really bad pneumonia, maybe 10% looks like that and 90% looks like that. You're in trouble, okay? The areas that look like this, that have very thickened respiratory membranes, those areas are not getting good blood supply either. So any medications that we are giving to our patients to help them recover, those medications are going here to the normal parts of the lungs. The medications are not getting to the abnormal parts of the lungs very well. That's the concept of ventilation perfusion coupling. All right, so let's go back to talking about pneumonia and thickening of the respiratory membranes. And this is one of the things that is happening now uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. The virus that causes COVID-19 is going to attack these cells of the normal alveolate of the, of the normal um, uh, simple 
uh, ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And so they're not good as at making a mucociliary escalator anymore. Um, and then they are also attacking these cells that make up the structure of the alveolus that is damaging them. And then they are also actually damaging these type two alveolar cells. That's not reflected in this particular image. We'll get back to it in a little bit. So normally any molecule of air would only have to diffuse from here to there, right? Very, very, very thin. But when a patient has pneumonia, their mucociliary escalator is not working very well. There's going to be more fluid here in their alveolus. There's going to be uh, damage uh, here that allows fluid to leak into the alveolus. And now we've got this whole war being fought here in what used to be the basement membrane. So for any molecule of oxygen to get absorbed, maybe some of it is here and it has to go all of this distance before it can get to a red blood cell. In other words, it still need, oxygen still needs to move by the principle of diffusion, but now it has to move four times as far or eight times as far. How does that influence how quickly it can move, right? Um, here is the distance between the air and the blood when you're healthy. If we make that distance four times as far, it is going to take much more than four times as long for things to diffuse, okay? So uh, normal diffusion might have been uh, this distance. If we make it four times as far, it'll take four uh, squared to diffuse. So if it has to diffuse 14, four times, it has to diffuse four times as far, then it'll take 16 times as long for it to diffuse, right? Four times as far, 16 times as long. Here's the problem. The problem is that when your lung is, is um, when your lung is healthy, it only needs about a third the time of passing through. So the truth is, if your lung has got a little bit of pneumonia and it's going to take oxygen molecules three times as long to diffuse into the blood, you're still going to feel okay. But if it takes four times as long to diffuse or five times as long to diffuse, the red blood cells are going to be leaving the capillary bed not filled with oxygen. It takes uh, every individual molecule, red blood cell, it'll take them about that long in a healthy lung in order to completely fill up with oxygen. So if you have got thickened respiratory membrane and it takes three times as long, all right, you're still doing okay. But if it takes four times as long or five times as long, there is not any red blood cell is not spending enough time in the capillary bed is simply not spending enough time here in the warehouse in order to load up uh, hundred percent with oxygen and you'll start to have real problems caused by a thickened respiratory membrane okay. we're going to come back to that concept one more time in the meantime let's talk about alveolar surface tension no, we don't have enough time in this video. We will start with alveolar surface tension at the beginning of our next video.